my car says, I need oil because you drive way too aggressively on these roads. Please give me a drink of oil. <laughs> I I guess I haven't had this thing in since August, which I haven't driven it that much. It's been, there's not been much to do. We've been in a pandemic, a plandemic. If you haven't seen the plandemic, check it out on YouTube. I saw a girl today. I saw a girl. Ole! I saw a girl today. And her name was Maria. Happy Saturday, everybody. We're getting the party started. I'm headed straight to Starbucks for Grande Blonde. No. Grande Blonde Flat White this morning is what is on tap. And I am feeling good. I'm feeling good. And I really wish I felt this good on the Orlando trip. I didn't feel this good on the Orlando trip. I didn't. I felt full of panic. I felt full of panic. I'm full of panic. But not now. I feel centered. I feel capable. I feel energized. I feel determined. I feel relentless. And I feel that there is nothing that's going to stop me from conquering the world. And at least the blogosphere. And at least the vlogosphere. I'm coming for you. I just got back from Starbucks. 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 What's this guy doing over here? It's kind of weird. Like, he's just standing there, like, right by his car. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm here at the Travel Plaza, which is also a, like, a truck stop plaza. Like, there's, there's a lot going on. And you can see over here, I haven't really shared this. Oh, I'm going to put it there. There is a, uh, a spa, a 24-hour spa, adult video, spa and adult video. Like, this is a harbor for all sorts of, of good-intentioned acts of humanity. Uh, maybe not so much. But it's right by my Starbucks. Like, this, this area has been known to uh, get its fair share of police intervention and action. And that's probably why I like it as well. I don't know if I should be here. I kind of like it. I like that. That energy. Anyway, that sounded weird. <laughs> I like that. I like that energy. Uh, I don't like it that well. Let's just get that straight. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I, I like to, uh, I don't know, push the, push the limits, push the boundaries a little bit. Just in my nature. That being said, it's fast and furious out here. F9 is in Ohio and we're, we're kicking it off. Like everybody wants a street race Tim today. I'm not going to tell you who wins, but I should have been a race car driver. I should have been a race car driver. I love to drive. I love to drive fast. I love to drive around curves. I, I love everything about it. I just love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Driving is not like a something that I have to do. It's something that I want to do. Like it's just, it's like an activity. It's a fun thing. It's an event. Every time I drive, it's like an event. And I'm lucky and fortunate enough to have had some really cool cars. I've had Corvettes. I've had an M4. I have this X3, which is the fastest car I've ever, ever had. And I just, I, I enjoy the event of driving. So much like everything else that I do, I, I make it more than it needs to be. We got a guy here walking around like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't, I don't know. I'm in a truck stop. It's not that hard. The adult bookstore is over there. <laughs> the restaurant's over there. There's a hotel down there that way. It probably charges by the hour. <laughs> the highway's over there. There's not that much going on here. Just just look around. I don't, I don't know. I'm in a truck stop. It's not that hard. The adult bookstore is over there. <laughs> the restaurant's over there. There's a hotel down there that way. It probably charges by the hour. <laughs> the highway's over there. <laughs> There's not that much going on here. Just just look around. Anyway, um Yeah. Yeah. Race car driving, jet setting turbo vetting, 
my vet was not a turbo vet, but I've had the fortunate luck of having some fast cars and I do love to drive and I do love to make everything into an event. So whether or not I'm going somewhere, driving somewhere or doing something, I try to make it extra special. I don't know why. I don't know where that comes from, but I always felt if you're going to do something, do it to the best of your capability and ability and represent. And I've always had that kind of showman type of attitude. I only wish that the showman attitude would just show up all the time. It wouldn't go and hide and retreat. And that's, that's really in the past. I, yeah, I mean, as I sit here and talk myself through this, you know, I, I've always been kind of a showy person and, and I've gotten that confused with being conceited and like showing people up and it's really not. And I, that was my insecurity in it. It's just being me. Like I am a showy person and it's not showing off to demean other people. That's, that's where I get screwed up. So, um, the attention that I get is just me being me. It's not me trying to get attention. And I am satisfied with the fact that you can take me or leave me. Oh, have I said how good I feel today? Does it show? Yeah, I feel really good. It's, inter it's interesting because sometimes I start talking before I think. It's like my mouth moves before I start thinking. Um, it's funny because I see this doctor that takes really good care of me. But I always wondered about my thyroid. Like, how do my thyroid panels look? You know, my T3, my T4, my TSH, my thyroid stimulating hormone. Looks all good, Tim. But I just don't feel like my metabolism. I always felt like my metabolism was slow. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, f I feel like I tend to... I, f I find it difficult for me to lose weight. Not that I need to lose weight. But sometimes I get, like, just... I'll eat... Like, on a trip. Like, this past uh, Orlando trip. I eat... I just... I, like, gain weight. And I feel like I'm not really losing weight when I kind of just pull back like it just kind of sticks with that and it's always felt like my my uh here we go got another guy my metabolism just isn't like boom 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 so i started supplementing with different things i do a lot of research on health and wellness uh oh i hope we're not gonna get am i gonna get killed i hope i'm not gonna get killed this could be the last video the lost video if you see if you see me chopped up well you're probably not gonna see me chopped up but um, serial killer alert. This would definitely be the place for them. Anyway, um, supplementing with iodine for thyroid support and selenium and vitamin C and magnesium. Very important to support the thyroid because you can have optimal levels of thyroid stimulating hormone, T3 and T4, which are the inactive and active um, thyroid hormones. You can have optimal amounts of those, but if you're under insufficient on your iodine, you can still be off. So I've been I've been supplementing with iodine actually for several years, but I fall I fell off. Like I stopped doing it about probably a year ago for some reason because I was like I feel great. I don't need this anymore, and so I stopped. Bad move. I think it was a bad bad move. Bad move. Um, and so recently I've started back up the last two weeks and it takes some time to really start to, to build man I feel incredible like I can't even it's the way I felt and I've, I'm like what it's one of those things where you stop doing it and then you're like man I just don't feel the same I don't feel as good like I feel good but not as good and you're trying to figure out like connect the dots like what was it like I, I didn't do anything drastic like, maybe I'm not working out as much. Is that it? Like, I don't know. Like, my energy's okay. It's not, like, off the charts. It's not, like, under the radar either. But in connecting the dots, I realized, I think it's the iodine. And even though my 
My thyroid labs look good because I get them done every three to six months. Um, something was missing. So I would encourage anybody out there, see a good functional medicine doctor who knows hormones and who who can guide you and help you to optimize your health. It's so important to be proactive so you don't fall into disease. It's better to, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know, you want to avoid things. You don't want to have to deal with things, you know, once you get them. You just want to stay away from all the bad. All the baddies you want to stay away from. And even though my doctor is great, he doesn't know everything. He doesn't know everything. So it really pays to do your research. You know, stay ahead of the curve on these things and and find some trusted sources that that really do dig into the research, like the research papers and studies about some of these things out there because I got to tell you, I went to that one doctor because I was like having this sore throat thing. My allergist was like, you need to go to ENT. I'm like, all right, I go to an ENT. They stick the scope up my nose, down my throat with the camera. They record it. He shows me the video. Everything looks great, Tim. Okay. You probably have a, some silent reflux. Okay, we'll put you on some PPI, some proton pump inhibitors. And guess what? Within like two days, I started feeling really weird. Like just not good. And then you read all the bad things that PPIs can do. Like they can block the absorption of minerals and nutrients. And then you can kind of, you can just really start going down a, a, a slippery slope with those things. So I don't want to be on them at all. And I always knew like hydrochloric acid, stomach acid is a big thing. Everybody, not everybody, I always say that, but people on a Western diet, we have low stomach acid. And that is like the first step in our digestion. It's the first step for our immunity. You know, having strong stomach acid neutralizes and kills a lot of bacteria and pathogens and this and that. So if the stomach acid's not right, then the acid reflux can actually be the problem. Um, it's not too much stomach acid that's causing the problem. It's in fact too low of stomach acid. So there's a lot of research that I've done throughout the years and so when he told me that about the PPI, I'm like, I'll give it a shot. But two days in, I'm like, I'm done. Get me on the HCL. So I started taking my own HCL, feeling better, feeling better. Um, but still not 100%. Still not 100%. Still kind of having issues. And gradually, I had to keep increasing the HCL. And lo and behold, I'm feeling much, much better. And, you know, these doctors just don't know everything. And they want to put you on medications that don't really serve you. They just, they mask a symptom. They don't fix the underlying cause. Like, you don't hear any doctors out there championing, Hey, we all probably have low stomach acid because we eat crappy food. And it's just one of those things that happens over time. Uh, and... If we all started increasing our stomach acid, we'd probably have a lot more, a lot less. We'd have, we'd have a lot less disease. We would be a lot healthier because our, our immunity would be greater and we would have better digestion and we would feel better overall. So, yeah, I encourage you to do your research, do your research and find trusted sources of um, medical information. And which that's been a lifelong journey. Like I got on that train back when I was a kid, like my mom was so into health food, so into health food. I feel like I was at the first health food store in Ohio. Like they opened up one at the mall and I was in there. I remember taking calcium supplements, shark cartilage, glucosamine, like when I was like 14 or 15 to support the joints. Um, and I still take it here and there, but getting into that mindset of there are therapies, there are preventatives, there are supplements out there that there's a whole world that can allow you to have better health. And so it just got me indoctrinated into that mindset to do my own research. And then when the internet hit, like, man, I'm just on there. What's the latest and greatest? What's been proven? What's, you know, what, what do people, what are people doing, you know, for longevity, anti-aging, 
to live their best life. So it's, it's important because if, if you're not feeling good, you can't live your best life. So I was lucky to, to be indoctrinated into that. And just through my ups and downs physically, um, to be able to do my own research and I'll do a deep dive. There's a lot, of, there's a couple of things that happened with me that took me out for like 10 years that that research capability paid dividends and it, it got me to now got me out of it because I was deep into Western medicine, Western doctors, and they did not serve me in any fashion. They just kept me treading water, spending a lot of money and going nowhere. And at the end of the day, they were completely and utterly wrong. So yeah, you really have to take ownership of your health. You have to take ownership of yourself and do your own research and dig in and become your own advocate and your own best friend. I see so many people that just, I'm getting on a rant here about doctors, but I see so many people that just take a doctor's word as gospel and don't even question it. And it's like, just like the PPIs, like you can stay on those things for years. Yeah, you're doing incredible damage to your body. Your body can't absorb nutrients. You could be impairing your ability to produce stomach acid once you go off of them. It could be affecting your your neurotransmitters, your serotonin, and what is it? The I want to say this: your neuro, neuro, epinephrine, neuroepinephrine, neuroepinephrine. I don't know. I wanted to sound smart, and I did not do a good job. But you have these neurotransmitters that make your brain function, you know, and if they're not in the right balance, you can go into depression, you can go into mania, like all these things can happen. So you don't want to really do anything to impair your brain. And this is what these medications that these Western doctors will put you on. And before you know it, you're on them for years and it's not a good scene. It's not a good scene. Sorry about that. Well, I'm not sorry about it. Why do I? Why am I apologizing? This is all benefit to you. Do your own research. I would say, if you don't know where to start, a person that I found that's really uh, does a really good job of kind of bridging the gap between Western medicine and more functional medicine, this more proactive medicine, is Dr. Berg. B E R G. He's on YouTube. He's got an incredible channel. And my God, I remember when he had like. 300 ish thousand followers. And now I, I want to say he's got like three, four, five million and it's only happened in like a couple years. He was relentless on building his channel. He's got a lot of good information. He's a chiropractor, but he, he has an awareness. He's done a lot of his own research and study to understand functional medicine. So he's a good resource to kind of dip your toes into what functional medicine is. Check it out. I think it'll be really insightful. It'll be enlightening for sure. And it'll give you a, a baseline for, Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't even, I didn't even know that was a thing like, Oh, vitamin D three. Really? Like you can only get that when you're in the sun and we're not out in the sun nearly enough anymore. Cause we're all working office jobs. Oh, so I need to take a supplement to have uh, levels that are in a therapeutic range. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm not feeling as happy and as joyful and as optimistic about my life. There you go. So now you learn something. You can take a supplement and really change your mood. A lot of people here in Ohio suffer for that because it's, it's so gray out here. We don't get direct sunlight. And when we do, it's too cold. People aren't walking around in like bikinis. Like I'm not walking around in a speedo or a thong. Like I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could, because you know I would. No, I probably wouldn't. But still, um, we don't get enough sun directly, and we're not out in the sun long enough to synthesize that D3 from the sunlight on our skin. So we have to supplement, or else we're going to be like, burr, burr, zombie, like, how you doing today? Okay. Like, I see it every wear around here. It shows up in the way people walk with slumped over shoulders, head down. Hey, so good to be awake. Let me get a donut. Let me get a donut and like a, like a candy bar and an energy drink. Energy drink will solve my problems. No, it could just be your D3. 
And let me tell you, when you get everything at the right level and in balance, if you could feel the way I feel now, <laughs> yeah, it's like off the charts. It's off the charts how good I feel. <laughs> it really is. Like, I'm just sitting here like, man. And sometimes things just kind of converge. They just kind of all come together. It's all, tr it's, sometimes it's trial and error on how much D3 you need. You know, you get labs, you get your lab report test and, and see where you fall in the range. But sometimes just because you're within range, most of the time, when you're within range, it might not be optimal for you. So you're treating the person, how does the person feel? Not a number. Like just because we're, you're in the middle of the range don't mean you're optimized. You might need to push it higher, you might need to be lower. You know, it, you, you might be taking something that is making you anxious, it's making you not feel, you're like you're just freaking out, like you're on edge, like, oh, oh, what, what, uh, uh, you know, that's not good. So you, you, you have to really be connected to your body and have a, a, an awareness of, of you and, and, and take inventory. Like, okay, I took this, and that made me feel this way. Uh, that's another thing I see, people just taking things and oh, I don't know what, you know, I don't know how much I'm taking, I don't know what I took, I don't know. Like, well, if you don't know what you took and how much, how do you know what's causing what, you know? <laughs> like if you're anxious a week from the, the day you started, you know, upping your D3 to 10,000 IUs, well, maybe you need to pull back on that, but you need to keep a calendar, keep a log, and do that sort of stuff. It's really, really important. But people don't wanna put the time. They don't. It's popping and then there's no stopping. And then we got, Bethany's gonna be calling me in three minutes. I think we said 12. Bethany always forgets though. Why do I have my seatbelt? Bethany always forgets. Forgets. She always forgets our calls. Not always. Just sometimes. <laughs> Bethany, why do you forget about me? Do you not care? I don't know why you're so upset with me. Bethany. Bethany. Bethany, Bethany, where are you? It's 12 p.m., Bethany. Did you forget about me? I feel like you've forgotten about me. Let's check my text message and see. Let's see what you say. You say it on the text message. Where is it? Where is Bethany? We want to do 12 is great. I'm gonna wait till 1201 and I'm gonna call her because this is what she said. I am so proud of you. That's amazing. She's so proud. I'm so proud of you getting all those videos out. Awesome, 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 awesome. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. I know I'm sure you still like your page, but you look amazing. And you look happy and you're on look amazing. your way doing all the shit you're supposed to be doing. I'm proud getting of you. Getting the shit done. Hell yeah. Getting the shit done. You know I get this shit done, yeah. Okay. Hey Siri, call Bethany Hannah on FaceTime audio. Calling Bethany Hannah on speaker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I celebrate. Hey, Sam, call an hour early? I thought we were talking at twelve. Yeah, isn't it only eleven there? No, it's 12. Oh. It's 12. <laughs> My, the times are so messed up. I thought you were <laughs> You forgot about our appointment. <laughs> no, I thought you were just dead. I was like, <laughs> at my time, this actually works better. So, like, I no. was like, uh. Is it, is it all right if I record you or no? No. Yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> I told you, everybody. I told you she forgot. I told you. <laughs> it's not that you forgot. You. It's just a time zone thing, right? Yeah, it's a time zone thing. This just happened for some reason. <laughs> 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 I'm glad 
Because <laughs> uh, I've been recording a video for YouTube for like the last, God, like 45 minutes. I've been sitting here going on and on talking to the camera. And I'm like, oh, we're eight minutes away. I wonder if she's going to remember. We're three minutes away. I'm going to sit here and wait. Let's see. <laughs> At 12.01, I'm going to call her if she doesn't call. <laughs> Let's see if she answers. <laughs> I've been having a ball. Oh, that's good. Well, I'm glad that you got that on video. It's probably going to be really funny. <laughs> You're hilarious. I'm so hilarious. I'm just a ball full of funniness and joy and laughter. That's Fat clubs going down. Jake Paul, Ben Askin, Ben Askin, Ben Askin, Ben Askin. It's going to happen. Jake Paul won. Wow, man. It was a knockout first round. Damn. No joke. <laughs> wow. And Snoop Dogg won like $2 million. Until next time, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.